1999 inductee Florence Wald, former dean of the Yale School of Nursing, is nationally known as the founder of hospice care in the United States. She was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame as well as the American Nurses Association's Hall of Fame. My family, who were New Yorkers, and were very familiar with the immigrant world, Lillian Wald, at the turn of the century, was the person who was my role model, was my mother's role model, was my father's role model, because they were socialists. And so that they saw nursing then was not just a case of hands-on care for patients, but also enabling uh, new immigrants in how they would be able to, to get the kind of health care that they needed through government, through uh, funding, and, and so forth. So that was very, very early in my career. The other influence came from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who was helping people to, to talk about what was going on in their, in their feelings. Those of you who know Elizabeth Kubler, she always had, think about it from where, where you're here, not up here. I always wanted to be a nurse from childhood on. Um, that was partly due to the fact that I had a lot of illness in my uh, childhood. And my mother uh, was not a nurse, but she was a very nurturing and caring person. And um, so somehow, my mother too was a role model and that it was just something that I felt familiar with, drawn to. The parts about nursing that I didn't like particularly it were the ones away from the patient's bedside and there was always something that I, and, uh, I was drawn more to home care than I was to hospital care. And um, so uh, when hospice sent the concept of hospice came across my brain it seemed as if it was just the place that the medium in that fit my own personality the hospice is not a place it is a philosophy of care and as such there are presently 28 hospice programs within the state that started as a result of the seed that she planted and each one of them service the community in a very close-knit and comprehensive way and I think that's a, certainly a, a very critical point because 90 percent of hospice care is provided in the patient's home and certainly those community-based programs carry that through and carry that vision of Florence's forward the vision of um, hospice and the way it developed uh, was uh, one of the very interesting things was that it was a very vigorous movement from the very beginning. The interest among doctors, nurses, social workers, medical students, so, um, and the clergy was beginning to spread through Canada, through United States, and, uh, and in England. And the enthusiasm uh, was not only of the professionals, but it was also true of the public. And the public who had been through this kind of an experience and had found it so unsupported and, and in their own way so terribly wanting that they began to think of of this themselves and it's that's one of the reasons that why I find it difficult to think of myself as starting the hospice movement because it was something was it's like a, a, a uh, prairie fire if you want want to uh, put it in those terms Vance had managed to draw together a group of people 
various clergy people, two priests, a uh, rabbi came occasionally, and others of uh, various backgrounds and training. And somehow or other, despite our very uh, different backgrounds and really to some extent different roles in society, within a few months we uh, established a very comfortable relationship, which was something that was uh, created by Florence and her ability to uh, respect and anybody's point of view and from where they came from and to try to integrate that person, all of us, into a movement. It was very helpful when you're giving patient care to bring back um, problems to the team and everyone brainstormed, everyone was kind of equal. Everyone felt very comfortable because of Florence. She made sure we all called each other by first names. Now, you must, have, you must realize uh, back then nurses did not refer to doctors by their first names. This all just uh, helped with um, your comfort level as to what you contributed to the group. Um, and you really felt like the doctors were listening or the ministers or that the group was listening so that your whatever you brought back was valuable. Florence works in a team and that to me has always been the greatest gift of being in the hospice movement, learning to become a member of a team. Florence saw the relationship of the arts to spiritual care, to spirituality, and she saw that in regard to observing what was going on here at the hospice, both in how the arts helped to enrich this environment and in the direct work that our team of artists who were working with me at that time were doing with patients and families. She brought the vision to all of us and helped us along the way. For R&R &R, music uh, and gardening, writing letters, and um, and theater and movies and reading and uh, and cooking sort of being a housewife an intelligent housewife <laughs> Henry is the most supportive person that you can imagine and gentle just as wonderful began to get involved with the hospice movement. The first th the thing that happened was the whole family went to Europe for the first time, and this was in 1965, and I, and I was, had just turned 50. I said to my husband, uh, I really wish I could give up the deanship and just go back to nursing. That's where my real love is. And he said, do it. care in this era is certainly uh, a preeminent theme in much of the media and very much on, on individuals' minds. As we enter into the 21st century, what will make hospice at the forefront of end-of-life care and what will make Florence's vision continue and grow and last? is again that it reaches people of all ages and speaks to individuals of all economic backgrounds, all cultures. People do not want to die in pain. Most of all, they want to be comfortable. And because of Florence's vision, because of hospice, we can make that possible.